You're looking at here questions that I put together that relate to periodic table type questions from the New York State Chemistry Regents exams from 2015. We're going to go over um, a set of them and then check out the part two video for the rest. All right, let's start with number one. We're looking for an element that's a good conductor of electricity. Well, of course, good conductors of electricity are going to be your metals. Of course, these are periodic table questions. Don't forget, you have your periodic table. The staircase, or this bolded line here, separates your metals from your non-metals. And of course you have what's called the semi-metals in between, which consist of boron, silicon, arsenic, tellurium, uh, germanium, and antimony. So these are the semis. You need to know those six, along with the left-hand side being metals and the right-hand side being non-metals. Well, you take a look and you find all four of these. Now, of course, they give you the names. They don't give you the symbols. And these are all in symbols. So what can you do if you're not sure? Go to reference table S. Right? Symbols along with names are listed for all of the elements. There's a second page to this. Find them if you need to. Do not guess when it comes to the exam. And sure enough, you do that, you realize silver is not SI, but it is AG, and it's with the metals. All the other choices are on the other side of this semi-metal staircase, as I call it. So your answer here, of course, is choice three. Let's go on to the next. Which elements have the most similar chemical properties? When you're looking at similar chemical properties, you're looking for the group, right, or column, also known as a family, right, on the periodic table. So you need to find where, again, these elements are. Sure enough, you go back to the table. Once again, what's the problem? The problem is these are all symbols, no names. If you don't know which symbol is which, then what are you going to do? You're going to go back to reference table S and look them up. It turns out that oxygen and sulfur, which is choice two, are here in the same group or family, and that's my answer. The rest, of course, are all over the place. Check and make sure you understand that. It is choice two. Let's move on. Question three. Elements on the modern periodic table are arranged in according to. Well, it is according to increasing what's known as atomic number, right? which are these numbers here on our region's reference table's bottom left-hand corner, atomic number. But New York State isn't going to make that so easy. You no need to know that atomic number is the same as the number of protons. There's my answer. Question four. As the first five elements in group 15 are considered in order of increasing atomic number, what happens to ionization energy? Okay, so increasing atomic number... Group 15, so let me erase this. Let's find group 15. The atomic number is increasing as I go down the group, and we want to know what's happening with first ionization energy. Well, reference table S, remember, you have ionization energies. They're right here. Take the time if you're not sure of the periodic trend here. So what do I have? I have group 15, I have nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic. So let's see. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic. I don't really have to do more than three. Look what's happening to the number. The number, of course, is decreasing or going down. So there's my answer decreases, or choice one. All right, let's take a look at question five. Which group of elements contains a metalloid? Well, I just got rid of them, so let's put them back. Let me erase this. Our metalloids, again, sit on the staircase here, as I call it, and the two below. So we have metalloids represented in group 13, 14, 15, and 16. Let's go back, and sure enough, here's my answer, group 16. 
check out part two. Do as many questions as you can, and good luck.